everybody, welcome back. Here we are in video two of our three-part series here on, uh, this is actually July 2nd, so this is our July 2nd uh, um, edition of our virtual farm tour. We've made our way up now past the inn through our test kitchen, our test garden as well, and up here into our fire garden. This is what we uh, named our location here. It's one of the first kind of plots you'll experience when you come on a little farm tour, you come on a little walk through the gardens. And uh, this is one of my favorite parts of the, of the farm. It's one of the areas we've worked very heavily on to, uh, to, come to deal with a lot of issues, some soil, soil problems as well as our weed control and uh, insect control as well as all of us are gonna be experiencing when you uh, get into the gardening world. But uh, first off, we'll pan around, take a look at all the different uh, rows we got here. It's a fun one for us. I try and squeeze every ingredient that we grow on our property into these beds. It's one of those things that I want our guests to be able to find. Everything we have to growing in a very compact location. And uh, we've got everything here. If we slow down here, we'll see we've got things like our cabbage on the far side there, onions, peppers, our next rotation of our, uh, our salad turnips, those beautiful white turnips you're gonna see in your, uh, your picnic boxes or maybe on your plate tonight as well. Uh, we've got our first rotation of beets coming up here, more onions, the, uh, the first rotation of salad turnips, so on and so forth as we go through the rest of the farm. Now, the first thing you'll probably notice when you're looking at these garden beds here um, is the methods we use, one of the ideologies we have on our property. First and foremost, we're transitioning everything in our farm over the last few years to be as regenerative as possible. We want to be a huge advocate for regenerative agriculture. It's something that our, our global world needs, of course, in terms of the environment. But for us, it's something that allows us to produce the best flavored ingredients and uh, in the healthiest way. So uh, on our property, we use no pesticides, herbicides, or synthetic fertilizers. It's what allows us to produce a healthy environment here for uh, the plants, as well as any of the, uh, the beneficial hunters we have on our, on our farm here. We do with a lot of insects, but we also have a lot of control environments here, uh, here as well. Things like slugs are a bit of a problem, but recently I've seen a lot of salamanders crawling around and toads hopping around our farm as well, which is all available to them because we have a healthy environment where they're not going to be uh, damaged to the pesticides or herbicide control uses. Now, if you look down here on our bed, we are growing our, uh, our beets here as well. And to my left hand side, we've got our onions growing. And you'll notice I'm kneeling in what is one of our pathways. We do everything on our farm here as a permanent raised low-till bed structure. Now this whole ideology is we're allowing us to maintain the best soil health we possibly can, and that ties into the regenerative agriculture. Um, so first of all, we have our permanent bed structures, and that means that the bed to my right here growing the beets, a bed to my left here growing my onions, and so on and so forth. Those bed structures, this 30-inch bed structure we have here, is permanent. It's gonna be here for all time, and we're never gonna move these beds. We will crop rotate out what goes into each bed, of course. That's super important for the health of your farm in terms of nutrient deficiencies, as well as uh, insect and uh, blight issues. But the main structure of that soil is gonna be there uh, for all time. And why is this? Because in our soil, a um, little quick little science lesson here for you on soil health. It's something that I've been obsessed over the last few years. In this soil is a huge collection of microbiology going on here. Things like microorganisms and even something as large of macroorganisms like your earthworms and, and different beetles and bugs crawling through the soil. We want to maintain the health of that soil. One of the interesting things when you get into the, the ideology of how plants grow is that plants actually provide uh, fantastic nutrients into the soil uh, for, for microorganisms to grow. And those microorganisms provide material and, or, and, um, and nutrients for the plants to grow. It's a symbiotic relationship. When you use things like synthetic fertilizers, the plants don't need to make that relationship work between the microorganisms. In other words, they don't need to trade one for one, and they just use that abundancy of fertilizer that's sitting there to continue to grow. The microorganisms die, and your soil becomes less healthy. So in a nutshell, what we're trying to do is allow that symbiotic relationship to, uh, to flourish. Let all those micronutrients, the uh, mycorrhizal fungi, these little um, kind of I picture them as like thread-like things going in through the soil and what they're doing is they're collecting all the nutrients, breaking things down and, uh, and then the plants, what they do is they produce carbon. The carbon releases through the root structures, they trade that for whatever nutrient that they need to give off uh, or receive from the microorganisms, give that back to the plant and the plants continue to grow. The reason we want to maintain our soil in a permanent bed is because by doing deep tillage of your farm, you break up that ability for those microorganisms, those little tender threads of mycorrhizal fungi to develop. So for us, we want to keep that structure in place, maintain the structure of those mycorrhizal fungi, and of course, any beautiful aeration that's been caused by the earthworms, by beetles, and by bugs crawling through the soil. So that's the permanent bed structure. Number two is our raised bed. 
Now here on our property, we do have quite sandy soil, so we do have fairly good drainage, but we want to maintain as much of that drainage as possible because we do get some flash rains every once in a while. We are in the maritime, storms come through and they are pretty devastating at times. We just had Dorian last year. Um, and for us, we want to make sure that the soil we're growing in is the best um, possible soil for our plants to grow into. And therefore, we want to make sure the raised bed is up um, a little higher off the main level of the ground to allow any irrigated water, or any rain water to drain off the top of the bed into our pathways. It can collect here all, it's, all it wants. I don't want any weeds growing. I, I don't mind with weeds growing here. I prefer if they didn't. And if we have compaction in here from too much water logging, it's going to kill the weeds and not our living plants. The plants, of course, are the most important thing because, of course, you're going to be eating those plants tonight and you want these to be as nice and lush as they possibly can be. So that's the permanent. That's the raised bed. Um, and as we continue on through the beds through here, we'll move on this way. I'm going to move you over to this section of the farm. We're looking at the low till of this now. Now I mentioned tilling does destroy the mycorrhizal fungi and those connections, and that is true. Uh, we would love to move into a bit of a no-till ideology in the future, but for right now, as we can transition this farm, we're using the low-till method. Now the low-till only tills the soil about three or four inches into the, into the ground, which means we're only disrupting that a couple top, a couple inches of the top soil, allowing that lower um, density of that soil in terms of the, uh, the, the mycorrhizal fungi, all the organisms going on in there, to continue to grow. The reason we till that is it's a little easier for us to plant into, and it allows us to mix in our into our soil our compost. We bring a organic compost out of New Brunswick. It's a fantastic organic uh, seafood compost technically, and uh, ma mostly made up of lobster bodies, mussels, mussel mud. That's the mud that gets picked up when you pick up the mussel uh, traps off the bottom of the of the water. And uh, but a bit of cedar is the base for that to go on to. And we bring that into here, and we add a large ratio of that into our farm each season. This feeds our soil and begins to feed our microbiology. One of the great things that the uh, the province here in PEI does, they have a, uh, introduced a health, a soil health test every season. It's a brand new one last year, and uh, one of the things we're learning about our natural soil here is it's not very nutrient rich. So for us, we want to add as much of that organic material back on these beds to kind of give it a shot in the arm. Of course, with regenerative agriculture, we'd love to be able to plant things like um, cover crops in to begin to regenerate that, that soil on a, on a much cheaper way, of course, but also a natural way to feed the microbiology in there. Uh, for now, we're giving it material through compost to give it a shot in the arm, build up our soil quality, and then continue on to develop a longer production on our farm. Now, over here to your left, my right over here, we've got our first rotation of turnips. In our first video, we talked about uh, culinary farming, using these crops at the different stages of their life cycle, the ideology of life cycle harvesting. So as you mentioned, if you can, can over there, on our left-hand side, those rows to your far right are the turnips. That's our second rotation of turnips coming up there. And to my right here is our first rotation of turnips. So what we're doing, one of the ideas we love to do is we do plant our, our turnips quite thick. And the reason for that is that when we go through, we want to provide small turnips, something like this, a beautiful turnip like that because what we're doing is that, that little turnip will be on your salad course. These tender, we'll call them baby turnips, are a fantastic ingredient. Um, the reason it's so small, and you might say this one is so large, is because of the density in which we planted them. By planting them super dense, they're out competing for space and nutrients together, which means that that one's getting a little bit larger because it won the competition, and this one's smaller. That's what you might call it, might, you might want to call this one a thinning. Rather than throwing that out, we put that into the salad. The beautiful greens are a nice little feature in terms of the flavor. And that nice, sweet, tender turnip goes right into the salad course and adds another booster with that lemon balm and our salad greens we have here as well. That larger one you're gonna see there, that'll be chopped up and added into a fresh, uh, a fresh mix of, uh, of grilled vegetables or maybe even fresh as a nice little ingredient in the, um, the meat boxes and our, and our, uh, our picnics we're doing or somewhere on a display throughout the salad course on the main menu of the inn today for your dinner tonight. Watch the last video coming up, folks. We're going on to our herb house, our three season herb house. We'll talk a little bit more about our transitioning into using more of these herbs and the flowers and the, the life cycle harvesting we do. Thank you.